Cruise and the Church, the intense relationship between the superstar and the leader of the Scientologists. Reaching for the stars, how does the Church of Scientology attract some of America's biggest celebrities, and what do the stars get out of it? The secrets of Scientology, the questions about the Church's beliefs, and their outraged response. Global resources of ABC News with Terry Moran, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City. This is Nightline, October 23rd, 2009. Good evening. Celebrity endorsement can be a crucial part of any promotion or product. A Super Bowl quarterback using a particular aftershave, an Oscar winning actress wearing a particular designer. And even in the area, private area, sorry, of personal faith, Celebrity endorsement can be influential in encouraging others to follow the same path. It's no surprise then that soon after the invention of Scientology by science fiction author L. Ron Hubbard, the group set about attracting major public figures, an effort that has proven extremely successful. Celebrities and the Church of Scientology seem to go hand in hand. And actor Tom Cruise is arguably the world's best known celebrity Scientologist. She said so. I really want to understand who you are. And I said, okay. <laughs> I said, I said, well, I'm a Scientologist. This is Cruz in a video made for a Scientology event that was leaked onto the internet last year. There's nothing part of the way for me. <laughs> Tom Cruz first burst onto the scene in a pair of white socks and not much else in risky business. Then he was a fighter pilot, a bartender, and by the time he uttered those now immortal words in Jerry Maguire... You... complete me. He'd become the most successful movie star on the planet and deeply involved in Scientology. Amy Scobie was a member of Scientology for 27 years. She was a church executive who helped expand Scientology's outreach to celebrities. Presbyterian Church doesn't have a wing that emphasizes reaching celebrities. Why do you think there was this emphasis on celebrity? One of the purposes of Celebrity Center is to make celebrities walking success stories of Scientology. How are you? Good to meet you finally. Tommy Davis is the Director of Public Affairs for the Church of Scientology. His mother is the actress Anne Archer. <laughs> who was nominated for an Academy Award for her role as a betrayed housewife in the film Fatal Attraction. Why was there this exceptional approach to celebrities? Well, what's the purpose what, of that? What you have in Scientology is you have, a, you have a lot of artists who are Scientologists. Some of them are well known. The Celebrity Center, which is the arts and culture branch of the church, first began. It was actually started by, founded by, and gotten going by Scientologists who are artists. <laughs> Scientology was founded by science fiction author L. Ron Hubbard in the early 1950s. One of the key practices in Scientology is auditing, which is a kind of counseling session in which a person's unconscious thoughts from painful experiences are purged, often with the help of a trained auditor and a device known as an e-meter. In this e-meter, this electrometer, which works on the same principle as a lie detector, even though they say, no, this isn't a lie detector, but it's the exact same principle. Bruce Hines left the church in 2003 after 24 years. But it indicates some kind of electrical pulse. Yeah, it sends a current through your body. And the theory is, is that when you have emotional charge, it changes the resistance of the body. So that changes the current and that it makes this needle move. Has the e-meter ever been subjected to randomized clinical trials to assess its efficacy? I have no idea. I don't know why it would be. It works in Scientology and that's what people use it in. I don't know why it would be subjected to random clinical trials. It, it, it's been tested because and it's used a, repeatedly it's a and extensively. for therapeutic care, you just said. In a religion. But has it ever been tested objectively, is what I'm asking. 
I mean, it gets used every day by Scientology I'm, counselors. I'm not asking that. I'm asking... To my knowledge, no. And as far as evidence of the e-meter and its efficacy, the evidence of that is in those Scientologists who have used it to great benefit. And as far as the Church of Scientology is concerned, it's the only evidence that matters, is, is the people and the results. From the start, L. Ron Hubbard set out to attract celebrities, believing high-profile public figures would be its most effective evangelists. Can you recall any celebrities who came into the center when you were there? I met John Travolta, Kelly Preston, Priscilla Presley, Lisa Marie, Edgar Winter, Isaac Hayes, uh, Tom Cruise. After Hubbard died in 1986, David Miscavige became the church's leader and soon embraced Tom Cruise with great fervor. But I guess it, it's helpful, isn't it, if uh, you're an organization with an individual as well-known, as famous, as successful as Tom Cruise? Sure, he's a of good course. He's a good advocate? Well, look, I think anybody who would complain about having successful, well-known, happy, uh, people John, be John members Travolta, of, of, the of their group. I, sure. I think you'd be crazy to complain about that. <laughs> Hines says he helped prepare for the arrival of the church's most celebrated new member, who decided to fully commit to Scientology by staying at the International Base in California for a few months of services. I was part of the preparations where David Miscavige brought Tom Cruise to the international headquarters. And Hines says nothing was to be spared. He had the very best auditors and the very best people looking after him. Just the, the best treatment that anyone could possibly get so that he got a favorable impression of Scientology. Marty Rathburn left the church in 2004 after 27 years. He was a top lieutenant to David Miscavige. Did you audit Tom Cruise? Yeah, extensively. So they were given what? A celebrity environment? A pampering? You got it. You got it. And who was doing that? Miscavige, man. I mean, that was his thing. Is all about image. He's flying across the country in Tom Cruise's jet. It's all about living the high life and being a powerful guy who is looked up to by the rich and famous. Tommy Davis says the church does not indulge or pamper celebrities. Here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. In recent years, Tom Cruise has been more confident about publicly asserting Scientology principles, particularly its rejection of psychiatric medicine. But that's what she went on the antidepressant for. But what happens to the antidepressant, all it does is mask the problem. There's ways of vitamins and through exercise and various things. I'm not saying that that isn't real. Rathbun says the Tom Cruise he now sees on TV is not the Tom Cruise he once knew. And she watched my Matt Lauer. And I go, that ain't Tom Cruise, that's David Miscavige. That's not the Tom Cruise I knew two years ago. You're referring to the moment when he attacked Brooke Shields for suffering postnatal depression and... Uh, and attacked Matt Lauer. I mean, he's not talking, understanding. he is talking to Matt Lauer like David Miscavige talks to his staff. You're glib, man. You don't get it. You don't understand, you know. Aren't there Matt, examples where it Matt, works? Matt, Matt, you, you don't even, you're glib. You don't even